All right, well, welcome to another uh, My Musings. Um, my name is Doug Mount, and um, I just wanted to pick up here in Psalm 18, uh, like I've been um, posting these videos, um, kind of my thoughts, um, the things that I, that kind of jump out at the page at me when I read the scriptures. And I've been reading through the Psalms, and um, I want to pick up in Psalm 18. And um, Psalm 18 is a, is a song of praise, um, is written by David, and um, and I've said this before in my videos, but um, I just got back from my morning jog, so I'm a little little sweaty, so apologize for that. But David writes in such a way, um, in such a, a, a beautiful poetic way, how he describes his relationship with God. It's like it's it's like that personal relationship that um, that God wants to have with each one of us, and that we ought to have with Him. Um, and it's a it's a it's like I said it's very personal it's very intimate um, walking with each other um, and uh, and and truly uh, living um, uh, as if God is right by His side, right by His side every step of the way, even though. Uh, he cannot see God. Um, he behaves and speaks and writes and sings as God is right there. And so um, let's get into Psalm 18. And I um, want to cover Psalm 18, 19, and 20 in this video uh, today. Um, but before we start, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for... Um, just the truth that it is, and I pray, Lord, as um, as we read and think, uh, that your Spirit would give wisdom, and Lord, that um, you would help us to understand more clearly who you are, who we are, and uh, Lord, that you would help us, um, Lord, that you would strengthen us for the purpose that you have called us to, and we give you all the praise and glory, in Jesus' name, amen. So Psalm 18 is actually um, a long, uh, it's, it's relatively long, it's 50 verses long. Um, and so I just want to read the first couple verses and, and, uh, and point a few things out. David writes, or sings, um, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. So I underlined in my Bible uh, the word my, if you picked up on that as you read. Um, he says my strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God. my strength, my buckler, my salvation, my high tower. So I count nine my's in those first, just those first two verses. God and David were very close. David had that close relationship with God. And sure, David wasn't perfect, but he had that close-knit experience and relationship with God where he called upon God, he leaned upon God, and God was there for him every single time. And so I guess the, the, the takeaway that, that, that we have for this is our relationship like that with God. Can we say that he is my strength? Can we say that he's my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my strength, my buckler, my salvation, my high tower? Um, and I think the only way we could say that is through the test of time, through the experience of faith, where we're in deep waters and we call upon God for help and he delivers us. It may not be the way that we thought we would be delivered, but that God comes through nonetheless. Um, 
I've been thinking about a song that when I first got saved that um, that I learned um, it's called in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time and one thing that um, I'm learning about God is that we want him to act when we pray we want him to act now we want him to to do something to fix the problem that we're in right now <clears throat> and no doubt sometimes he does that sometimes he doesn't sometimes in that trial or in that temptation or in that circumstance whatever it may be he is teaching us something and so he allows that trial to continue for the purpose of deepening our faith and helping us to learn a lesson, a life lesson that otherwise we would not have learned. And those are difficult times, it's difficult times to wait upon the Lord when we pray, we pray and we pray and we ask for something to be removed or changed and it doesn't happen. And so we have to wait because in his time, as the song goes, he makes all things beautiful in his time. And so having that close-knit relationship with God is, is clearly seen here. And uh, David is rejoicing in it. Verse 6 says, In my distress I called upon the Lord, cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. My cry came before him, even into his ears. So, the question again for us is, in our distress, David says, in his distress, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. Who do we call upon when we're distressed? When the anxiety builds up, when the stress builds up, do we run to some product you know, some food, some drug, some uh, something that we ingest uh, to help relieve us of that stress? Um, or do we just want to get out? We, we, we just physically meet, leave and, 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 and run? Um, we have to really develop the discipline of calling upon God in our distresses. He stands ready to help us, uh, to be that source of comfort. And um, we have to build a history, uh, day by day, week by week, that when we're stressed, when we're tempted, when we're tried, that we call upon Him, that we cry to God. I know God's teaching me that in my life. Um, teaching me not to just stand and, and grim and bear it, but but to call upon him, to get on my knees and call upon him and ask him for help. That's what David did. And it says that God heard him and he responded. And he responded in a marvelous, miraculous way. Um, listen to what it says in verse 7. Then the earth shook and trembled. The mount foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was raw. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by him. He bowed the heavens also, came down, darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a chair and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. And this, this colorful, beautiful language is speaking of how God responded quickly and he moved with great um, uh, speed to David's rescue. And, um, wow, you know, just a, a, a wonderful, um, a wonderful example. Um, it says a little bit further down in verse 17, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. <clears throat> Do you have enemies, strong enemies that are stronger than you? Um, 
I know I do. There's things in my life, in my family, I, I can't fix. But God can. And um, it says, The Lord was my stay. What great... Um, what just a great testimony that David has of the Lord being his stay, the Lord that came to his rescue. Um, the psalm kind of goes, goes on, and, and uh, you come down to towards the end of the psalm, and uh, <clears throat> another verse that I kind of have highlight, or not highlighted, but underlined, <clears throat> says in verse 46, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. So, we're in distress. We're in trial. We cry out to God. We call upon Him. We see Him do great things in delivering us. And then we have another responsibility. And that is to exalt God. David sings, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. <clears throat> Praise is a wonderful response to God's work in your life. And so you have, um, obviously God wants us to be thankful. Uh, God wants us to call upon Him in the day of trouble. And God wants us to praise Him and thank Him. Um, sure, he he loves praise. He loves praise from an honest and humble heart. But I also think God knows what we need. He knows how we were made. He made us, right? He crafted us. Mind, body, spirit. He knows what makes us happy and what will bring satisfaction and contentment and joy and when we praise God, that's what happens. It's an amazing thing. When we point our hands and our attention to Him and exalt Him, we're blessed. Isn't that weird? You would think if we praised ourselves and exalted ourselves, we would be blessed and happy. But that's not what happens. We, we then get conceited, we get proud, and we get bitter, and we get full of ourselves. And it ultimately doesn't bring happiness and contentment. It's when we direct our praise and our attention and we point people to the Savior, it brings great joy and contentment in our lives. And that's the message of the Scriptures, is, is God created us. He wants us to be happy and joyful, truly joyful, not some vain thing, some empty, in some empty way. And He gave us a book to show us how to do that. And we can fight them all we want. But when we humble ourselves. And we read the scriptures. And we obey the scriptures. Then we have great joy. And happiness. Contentment. And that's my encouragement to you. Um, so that's uh, kind of an overview of Psalm 18. You go to Psalm 19. Uh, this is a, uh, one of the more popular psalms. And <clears throat> it starts um, by uh, speaking of God's creation, and um, and it's it's fourteen verses long, but it's it's a it's a very uh, it's just a psalm full of great uh, truth. It says, "The heavens declare the glory of God; the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge." There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So, what the scriptures are saying here is that God's creation, if we look at it objectively, tells us of His glory, of His existence, of course, of His glory and majesty. When you look at this earth, this uh, universe, um, you look at the galaxy, you look at everything that he has created from a, as wide of an angle as you could get. You say, wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. Everything works. Everything spins 
as it should. It's amazing design. And then when you go into look at it a little bit more deeply, you can look at this earth, you can look at the order that's here, you can look at uh, the different animals and, uh, and God creating us, you can look at our bodies and how intricate and detailed they are, what an incredible machines they are, um, just a wonderful thing. Um, <clears throat> I was, uh, I was, uh, it's, this is kind of a, a funny thing I read recently, but it was talking about the cow. And, uh, you know, has man ever created a machine that could eat grass and produce milk? <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, and so, uh, um, here you have God's beautiful design declaring his glory. When you see the order, when you see the majesty, uh, it's just awesome. And so when we look at creation objectively, not through a lens of evolution or through uh, some other lens, um, but we just look at it objectively, we consider it. We can't deny that God is the creator of it. Um, and that it was created with an intelligent design. Um, then you come down, so there's creation, and then you come down to verse 7, another verse I have underlined here. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So you have God's creation is one thing that speaks to his glory. And it would be difficult to look at that objectively and not come away with a belief that there is a God or there is an intelligent designer out there somewhere. But then you have the reference in verse 7 of Psalm 19 to the law of the Lord. So not only has this God created this world, it speaks of his greatness. He has given us his law so that we can know him even better, know him more deeply. And so it says the law of the Lord is perfect, it's flawless. Everything that's written therein is great for us. And then it says, uh, converting the soul, reviving the soul. So I encourage you to get into the law of God, get into the word of God. And then it says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Um, I can testify to this. Um, I'm very simple-minded. I'm not very complicated in any way. Um, I try to keep things, you know, one plus one is two, um, and 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 not get much more complicated than that. I try to look at things very simply. And um, uh, but when I read God's word and I see the things that He wants me to stay away from, and I see the things that He wants me to get involved with, I can live a life of wisdom because I'm reading uh, of what. Um, God is trying to communicate to us. I'm reading the experience of people who have gone before me, and I can say, wow, I should do this with my life. This would be a wise decision. Or, I need to not do this. This didn't work out very well, and I need to stay away from that type of life, that type, that type of thinking, because that leads me down this way. And so, the law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, is, is sure it's trustworthy and it makes simple people wise um, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt that was quoted as as writing or saying that a good knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college degree and uh, written back you know over a hundred years ago a college degree was pretty was pretty significant to have a college degree back then um, but he said that if you had a good knowledge of the Word of God, it was worth more than that. That's pretty impressive. Um, just the thought of, of, of one of our great presidents. Um, the psalm kind of goes on. It says, the statutes of the Lord are right. Verse 8, rejoicing the heart. Living by the law of God, the statutes that he gives, rejoices the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 
um, the fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether more to be desired are they than gold yea than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb <clears throat> It's interesting how people, myself included, um, I'm not excluding myself in any way from this. For some reason, we tend to make decisions based upon what is financially advantageous to us. And so it's, uh, it's one of those things that we really have to watch ourselves. Um, we have to consider what truly do we want in this life. The scripture says here that God, the judgments of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the law of the Lord is to be desired more than gold. He says, hey, yeah, more than fine gold, you know, purified gold sweeter than honey um, we need to look at ourselves regularly and say am I living for gold that I'm gonna leave behind when I'm dead and gone or am I living for a deeper knowledge of the law of God and thus God himself better understanding him where is our tr where is our heart what do we desire when we get up in the morning and we, we need to watch ourselves. We need to watch that we're not just focused on making money and, and trying to accumulate wealth or material things for our sex. Uh, Jesus said you cannot serve gold or, or, or God and mammon. You cannot serve, desire God, and also desire the material pleasures of this world. You can't do it. They don't mix. One is... For eternal purposes, one is for temporal purposes. And then um, you come to the end of the of the of the uh, psalm, and this is one of the um, one of the things that David, you know, you can see a little bit of his heart. He says, "Keep back thy servant," talking of himself, in verse thirteen, also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. David said, God, help me. Help me uh, from taking a matter for granted, assuming it to be true, and being found false. And then he says, hey, you know, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in my sight. Uh, may our words, our meditations of our heart, of our mind, be acceptable to God. We have to remember that. Um, Psalm 20 is re relatively short, and I just want to pull out two verses for it. This was a psalm that was uh, written um, before a, a, a battle that the Israelites would go into, and he says, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God, of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So uh, asking for God's strength, God's help in that, in, that, in that time of trouble, that day of trouble. And then he says in verse 7, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And... Uh, you know, it's funny, I, you know, I work in the defense industry and, and God is, um, God is, is challenged by our military might. United States, we have 12 aircraft carriers that are around the globe, ready to respond in, in, in any matter uh, to defend our nation and our freedoms. And, uh, and we have such an incredible defense uh, system uh, with the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, Coast Guard. It's amazing our our natural uh, our our defense mechanisms. Uh, it's easy to put trust in those people in those programs and systems that provide us defense. 
But at the end of the day, um, we have to remember and trust in God. God is the one who will defend us. And um, uh, one that we can put our trust in. So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Um, you know, just continue to, to encourage you guys to get into the scriptures, to read for yourselves. Develop your own musings, your own thoughts that, that the Spirit speaks to you as you read His Word. And, uh, and thus just have a wonderful, joyful uh, life experience every day. Uh, highly encourage you every day to get into the Word of God. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day and thank you.